Hello and welcome back to Wine for the People, where today we're going to continue our series of deep dives. I, Noah, am going to get down to the nuts and bolts of my all-time favourite white grape variety. For those long-time followers of the show, this is the arguable champion white grape of the Loire Valley, and sorry to any Sauvignon Blanc enthusiasts out there, 100% definite champ of South Africa, this is of course Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc, of course, has a very deep and intricate history where its first noted origins around the city of Anjou. It's actually thought to have been an offspring of Savignon, the famed white grape of Jura, but also has links back to Germany under the pseudonym Tramina. Savignon and also an unknown other parent species are thought to have conceived a trio of Venus children, uh, one being Trousseau, one of course being Savignon Blanc, and the last, Chenin Blanc. This may be the most successful trio of children since the Olsen sisters, meaning that Chenin Blanc, obviously the Elizabeth Olsen, is actually an uncle or aunt to Cabernet. Sauvignon. Shannon is now very much linked to the Loire Valley. Ever since his first documentation has been synonymous with the regions of Samoa, Bouvray, Touraine and of course Anjou, where it is actually the principal white grape variety. Its sibling Sauvignon Blanc actually reigns supreme to the west in Sancerre and Puy Fume, and its estranged trousseau has a bit of a cult following across in the Jura. But Outside of the Loire, Chenin Blanc has become synonymous for an entire other country. And unlike its home in France, where Chardonnay is still the favored white grape, South Africa actually has a very, very long love affair with the variety, where it's actually the number one planted grape. It actually makes up almost 20% of total plantings across white and red varieties. It's actually thought to be sent over to the governor, Jean van Riebeck, in 1655 by the Dutch East India Company and established in what we now know as the Cape of Good Hope. It was actually colloquially known, and still to this day somewhat, is known as Steam. In both France and South Africa, it has now been made into a wide range of styles, and it rivals varieties like Chardonnay, Riesling, and even Palomino for their versatility. It's made into sparkling wine, dry styles of wine, ultra-neutral, plain, really, really easy drinking styles of white, also to oxidatively handled, rich, nutty, barrel-fermented wines as well. It's also made into a bunch of sweet wines, leveling from you know, slightly sweet, off-dry styles to very, very betritized rich, sweeter styles. As a variety, it's as chameleonic as it gets, and in a wide array of aspects, the potential for the wines is massive. Great Clermont de Loire has crackling acidity, great fruit core, and that punches above its weight in quality like champagne, but without the price tag. Dry styles of Stellenbosch can actually be mistaken for quality Burgundy, and the great off-dry styles of Seven Years can actually have you thinking, who even needs Riesling? But I also want it noted that that's a joke. We all need Riesling. Riesling is the best. Besides, Shannon, of course. In a blind tasting context with all of these global touch points to quality wines, it can actually be difficult to pick out Shannon in the lineup, which is where we at Wine for the People, blind tasting specialists actually come in handy. So here are some tips. If it looks like Chardonnay, if it smells like Chardonnay, but it's got heaps and heaps of acidity, it's probably Shannon. And if it starts to taste a bit like honey, custard apples, those are the two most crucial flavor notes to link to Shannon Blanc. And then you'll get well off the Chardonnay path. And for South African styles, they're particularly tropical with a great mix of pineapple, vanilla, due to riper fruit, and also barrel fermentation, which they've made their signature. It might give you a little bit of a pina colada vibe if you think about it hard enough. Shannon Blanc has evolved from its historic roots in the Loire Valley to become a beloved grape variety from various regions worldwide. From France to South Africa, it's now grown in the United States. In the 1980s, it was actually more widely planted than its native France, but that has declined steadily since. It was grown all around the country, places like Washington, California, New York, even in places like Missouri. But unfortunately, for the most part, it was not heralded for its quality, mostly for the acidity venues in blends, particularly with varieties like Chardonnay and Columbard. It's also got a great and long storied history here in Australia, particularly on the western end of Australia. Some of the oldest Chenin Blanc vines in the world are actually in the Swan Valley. Reviving both the popularity of the variety, but also the region along with it. And also it's really important to note that Margaret River, is, which is the more premier region in the West, has a sizable planting of Chenin Blanc and produces some of the finest wines of the variety in the country. If you're ever in WA, go for a surf and have a glass of Chenin Blanc at the Settlers Tavern. Now, if you've not had the fortune of trying Chenin Blanc, here's a few that you should get your lips around. To start off with, grab a great table Chenin from Australia. My personal favorite is Dormalona, an uh, excellent value producer from incredibly farm vineyards and gently handled and sits on the shelf at about $30 Australian, which is fantastic value for money. If you're going to South Africa, you want a nice kind of premium quality, Check out Testa Longa, really fantastic cult follow producer, and their El Bandito Cortez is a very, very special wine from Swartland that'll cost you about 80 bucks. But if you're looking to try the absolute best of the best from an icon producer, you simply must try Nicolas Strolli. He's the godfather of natural wine, and he's a noted Chenin Blanc 
obsessive. His top cuvee from Seven Years, Coulé de Sauron, is a absolute must try for any wine enthusiast. And that all about do it for me on Chenin Blanc. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys think about the variety. Do you love Chenin Blanc? Any big fans out there like me? Any particular Chenins that you've tried that you've loved? Anything you've had that you've not loved? Let us know below. And of course, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.